there was a guy who was dreading a letter from the IRS. Apparently, he owed the IRS some money, money he didn't have, but he was told to expect a letter detailing the amount of, of that money. And so he was, he was dreading that letter. When the letter arrived, he, he lost courage, and he just he, he couldn't bear to open that letter. So he put the envelope on his desk for the next five days um, while he just kind of groaned in fear, wondering, like, how much is it going to be? W where am I going to get the funds? How am I going to pay it? What if I can't pay it? How long am I going to be in prison? Finally, he got the courage to open the letter. And when he opened the letter, he discovered... Not a bill to be paid, but a check to be cashed. The IRS, it turns out, owed him money. And so here he had wasted five days being afraid. He had wasted five days in fear of being afraid when he wouldn't have had to be afraid if all he would have done is just open that letter up. Do, don't we spend a lot of time kind of fearing things that we wouldn't need to be afraid of? Um, some silly, some real, but like public failure, embarrassment, unemployment. Um, asking that person out, being rejected, maybe having a difficult conversation, fear of fear that we'll never find the right spouse, um, fear, fear that we'll never enjoy good health, fear of growing senile, fear of getting sick, fear of, fear of failing to provide for our family. Or maybe super fear, fear of just being trapped or abandoned or forgotten. Legitimate concerns, all of them, but they can be kind of come uh, sort of imaginary monsters hiding under our bed, causing us to fear if we don't open up the letter, if we don't open up God's letter to us. When a challenge comes, is your first thought how you can overcome it? I mean, how many resources for help do you and I look to when a challenge comes? When, before we turn to, to God... Do you sometimes have difficulty trusting that God has the power to do what he's promised? Because that's what being afraid is. Being, being afraid is, is not trusting that, that God has the power to do what he's promised. And being afraid is the opposite of faith. See, faith is simply trusting that God has the power to do what he's promised. But being afraid, which is the opposite, is not trusting that God has the power to do what he's promised. So our, our quick lesson today, um, which is a message from Isaiah to King Ahaz in Old Testament, King of Judah, just basically this. King Ahaz had a God-fearing father and a God-fearing grandfather who both opened God's letter, who both read God's book. But for some reason, Ahaz didn't. And so Ahaz didn't trust that God had the power to do what he promised, meaning Ahaz lived afraid. He didn't have faith. And so being afraid... Ahaz turned to other things to be his God. He turned to other sources for help, and he encouraged his people to do the same. But now what was happening on the world scene is there were two kings ganging up on Ahaz, and so guess what? Ahaz was afraid. And instead of opening the letter, instead of opening the book, instead of turning to God, instead of asking the Lord for help, Ahaz turned to the king of Assyria for help. And even though he didn't deserve it, God wanted to show Ahaz that it was going to be okay, that he was going to be safe, that he didn't need to worry. So he sent um, Isaiah. Actually, Isaiah brought his little son with him, and he sent Isaiah to go and encourage Ahaz. And basically, Isaiah said, be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. So don't panic. I'm here to help you. You don't have to worry about those two kings, okay? And you don't need to go to anyone else for help. I'm going to help you. In fact, I want to give you a sign. I want to give you a sign to show you that you don't need to be afraid. And so here's what he says. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the, in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you, will you try the patience of my God also? So the Lord is like, ask me for a sign. Ask the Lord for a sign. Any sign. Highest heights, deepest depths. Bring someone down from heaven. Bring someone up from the dead. Whatever. Any sign. Because I want to show you that I'm going to take care of you. Ahaz is like, I will not ask. I'm not going to ask for a sign. I'm not going to put the Lord to a test. Well, that wasn't the reason. God told him to ask. The reason Ahaz 
was declining asking God for the sign is that he had already decided he was going to do it his own way. He already resolved he wasn't going to follow God's will. He had already determined that he was going to go ask the king of Assyria for help instead of asking the Lord for help. Because Ahaz, Ahaz was trying God's patience by relying on himself instead of relying on God. Because he didn't trust that God had the power to do what he promised, which is a lack of faith, which means he was living afraid. Don't we do the same? We, we try God's patience with relying on ourselves instead of relying on him, especially in times of despair. When, when, when God has said in all things he's going to make, he's going to work good for those who love him. He's going to make all things work out for good. Or do we always look to God's help first when there's a difficulty, when there's a challenge in front of us? Or how many different sources of help do we turn to? Do we ask for God's help uh, when, when we lose our set of keys? Or when we lose an account? Or when we lose a job? Or when we lose a loved one? Do, do we trust in God as we give him our offerings, as we give him our time, as we give him our service, that, that he's going to use those things better than we would? God offers us this powerful sign in his word and his sacraments. Do we turn to it? Or do we often believe the lie that the enemy so often tempts us to believe? The lie that God isn't real, that God isn't able to help, and that God doesn't want to help. That's the lie. How often do we believe that instead? So God's like, you don't want to sign? Well, guess what? I'm going to give you one anyway. I'm going to give you, plural, I'm going to give y'all. If he was from Texas, it'd be, I'm going to give y'all a sign. You, the readers of this book, the people listening to it today, everyone, I'm going to give you all a sign. Here's, here it is. Here's the sign. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you, as in you all, a sign. Here it is. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. A son's going to be born to a virgin. Well, that ought to get your attention because that's impossible. And he will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. He will be called God with us. So God is real. God is able to help. And God wants to help. We spend so much time fearing that those things aren't true. But God is real. God is able to help. And God wants to help. God wants us to stand firm in faith. He wants us to not be afraid. And so he, he wants to give us a sign to assure us. And sometimes we don't even want his sign. We don't even want to open his sign. We don't even look at it. But he gives, one a, he gives it to us anyway. When all seems hopeless, when all seems lost, a sign that God himself has come to rescue us. A son, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Now it would be, it would be, it would have been incredible enough if, if just, if God became a human and just lived among us for a while and, and maybe taught us, that would have been incredible. But God did more than that. He came to be with us, God with us. The purpose of the incarnation, the purpose of Christmas was so we could have a relationship with God. And in Jesus, the almighty, unapproachable God, became a human being who can be known and loved, who, can, who we can have a relationship with. Does that stun us the way it should? I mean, back in the Old Testament, coming near to God was terrifying. People died coming in the presence of God. If Moses would have heard these words that John wrote, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, we've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only. Moses would cry out, I didn't get to see his full glory. Do you guys understand what this means? This means that through Jesus Christ, you can see God. You can meet God. You can know him personally without fear, without terror. Do you understand how amazing this is that God is with us? Friends, when God showed up here, he, didn't show, he, didn't, he wasn't a pillar of fire or a storm or an explosion. He was a baby. The most vulnerable thing there is, a baby. Why did God come as a baby rather than a storm? Because he came this time not to bring judgment, but to bear judgment, to pay the penalty for all of our sins, to take away the barrier between us and God so that we could be together. Jesus is God with us. So we need to, we need to open that letter, okay? We need to read the letter, and we need to look at the sign. Because in God's letter to us, we have, 
we have, we have a powerful sign that can help us through any difficulty, any challenge. We have this sign that, that can always help us past our fears. So King Ahaz, you afraid of those armies? The virgin will, be, will give birth to a son. God is with us. Friends, are, are you afraid of, of failing? The virgin gave birth to a son. God is with us. Are you afraid of those debts that you have? The virgin gave birth to a son. God is with us. Are you afraid of the anxieties that this season brings? The virgin gave birth to a son. God is with us. Are you afraid of the things going on in the news? The virgin gave birth to a son. God is with us. Are you afraid of that that challenge in front of you? Being rejected, um, failures. The virgin gave birth to a son. God is with us. Are you afraid of what the future holds? Are you afraid of death? The virgin gave birth to a son. God is with us. So like Ahaz, don't refuse to look at the sign. And like the guy with the IRS letter, don't refuse to open that letter. Don't refuse to open that letter and read it and let God remind us of his good news. Let's open that letter often. Let's read it all the time. And let's, be, let's not listen to the voices of fear out there. Let's listen to the voice of God in here. The virgin gave birth to a child, to a son. God is with us. Let's open that letter. Let's read that letter. That's what the children are going to do for us right now. They're going to open that letter up for us, and they're going to read it. And they're going to remind us of the good news of Christmas, that love came down. 